Hi class, we will be discussing statics of rigid bodies, specifically fundamental concepts for this video. First is what is mechanics? It can be defined as the science which describes and predicts the conditions of rest or motion of bodies under the action of forces. It is divided into three parts, mechanics of rigid bodies, mechanics of deformable bodies, and mechanics of fluids. So we have here a diagram. First thing is engineering mechanics. Sa baba, that is divided into two. We have mechanics of solids and mechanics of fluids. Next thing is mechanics of solids is also divided into two, which is mechanics of rigid bodies and mechanics of deformable bodies. For mechanics of rigid bodies, which is divided into two parts, statics and dynamics, dynamics is also divided into kinematics and kinetics. Mechanics of deformable bodies is also divided into two parts, which is theory of elasticity and theory of plasticity. And then for mechanics of fluids, we have three topics involved, which is ideal fluids, viscous fluids, and incompressible fluid. The mechanics of rigid bodies is subdivided into statics and dynamics, as you have seen in our diagram. The former dealing with bodies at rest, the latter with bodies in motion. In this part of the study of mechanics, bodies are assumed to be perfectly rigid. Actual structures and machines, however, are never absolutely rigid and deform under the loads to which they are subjected. But these deformations are usually small and do not appreciably affect the conditions of equilibrium or motion of the structure under considerations. They are important though as far as the resistance of the structure to the failure is concerned and are studied in mechanics of materials, which is a part of mechanics of deformable bodies. The third division of mechanics, again as seen in the diagram, is the mechanics of fluids. It is subdivided into the study of incompressible fluids and of compressible fluids. An important subdivision of the study of incompressible fluids is hydraulics, which deals with problems involving water. The basic concepts used in mechanics are space, time, mass, and force. These concepts cannot be truly defined. They should be accepted on the basis of our intuition and experience and used as mental frame of reference for our study of mechanics. So the concept of space is associated with the notion of position of a point P. The position of P can be defined by three lengths measured from a certain reference point or origin in three given directions. These lengths are known as the coordinates of P. So we have here our diagram. We have Z-axis, Y-axis, and X-axis. So in order for us to analyze our certain object, we need first to locate its location. To define an event, it is not sufficient to indicate its position in space. The time of the event should also be given. Concept of mass is used to characterize and compare bodies on the basis of certain fundamental mechanical experiments. Two bodies of the same mass, for example, will be attracted by the earth in the same manner. They will also offer the same resistance to a change in translational motion. Force represents the action of one body to another. It can be exerted by actual contact or at a distance as in case of gravitational forces and magnetic forces. Force is characterized by its point of application, its magnitude, and its direction. A force is represented by a vector. So here, another diagram. Force, action of one body on another. Characterized by its point of application, magnitude, or intensity and direction. So again, we have the point of application. We have our magnitude, 10 pounds, force, or for example, 10 kilonewton. Then the direction, that is 30 degrees from our x-axis. And then we have our line of action. So the direction of a force defines its line of action. The study of elemental mechanics rests on six fundamental principles based on experimental evidence. First, we have the parallelogram law for the addition of forces. This states that two forces acting on a particle may be replaced by a single force 
called their resultant, obtained by drawing the diagonal of the parallelogram which has sides equal to the given forces. Next, we have the principle of transmissibility. This states that the conditions of the equilibrium or of motion of a rigid body will remain unchanged if a force acting at a given point of the rigid body is replaced by a force of the same magnitude and same direction, but acting at a different point, provided that the two forces have the same line of action. Newton's Three Fundamental Laws formulated by Sir Isaac Newton in the latter part of the 17th century. This loss can be stated as follows. First law, if the resultant force acting on a particle is zero, the particle will remain at rest if originally at rest or will move with a constant speed in a straight line. Second law, if the resultant force acting on a particle is not zero, the particle will have an acceleration proportional to the magnitude of the resultant and in the direction of this resultant force. It has a formula of force is equivalent to mass times acceleration. Third law, the forces of action and reaction between bodies in contact have the same magnitude, same line of action, and opposite sense. Newton's law of gravitation. This states that two particles of mass capital M and small letter M are mutually attracted with equal and opposite forces, capital F and negative F of magnitude F. So given with its formula, F is equivalent to our universal gravity multiplied by capital M multiplied by its small m and divided by r squared. So capital M is the mass of the first object. Small letter m is the mass of another object. Vectors. Various quantities used in engineering mechanics may be grouped into scalars and vectors. Scalar quantity. Quantity is said to be scalar if it is completely defined by its magnitude alone. Examples of scalar quantities are area, Length, mass, moment of inertia, energy, power, volume, and work, etc. While vector quantity, a quantity is said to be vector if it is completely defined only when its magnitude as well as direction are specified. Examples of vector quantities include force, moment, momentum, displacement, Velocity and acceleration. So, dapat, eto lahat is my direction. Force systems. A force has the following characteristics. First is magnitude, direction, point of application, and line of action. Smaller magnitudes of forces are measured in Newton or capital N or in pounds or LB and larger in kilonewtons, KN or kilopounds, KSI. Next, we have systems of forces. Forces are classified depending upon its situation. The general classification is coplanar and non-coplanar. In coplanar, we have four categories, collinear, parallel, concurrent, and non-concurrent. While in non-coplanar, we have parallel, concurrent, and non-concurrent. First is collinear force system. When the lines of action of all the forces of a system acts along the same line. This force system is called as collinear force system. So as you can see in the figure, our forces act in only one axis. Next is parallel forces. Forces that act in the same or opposite directions at different points on an object. So as defined, no, parallel lines are lines that do not intersect or has the same slope. Let's proceed with coplanar force system when the lines of action of a set of forces lie in a single plane is called coplanar force systems. So, ibig sabihin, isang plane lang po siya. How about non-coplanar force system when the line of action of all the forces do not lie in one plane? That is called as non-coplanar force system. So, as you can see, yung forces natin does not act in one plane only. So let's proceed with concurrent force system. The forces, when extended, pass through a single point 
and the point is called point of concurrency. The lines of actions of all forces meet at the point of concurrency. Concurrent forces may or may not be coplanar. So as you can see in our figure, yung three forces natin meet at our point O. Next would be non-concurrent force system. When the forces of a system do not meet at a common point of concurrency, this type of force system is called non-concurrent force system. Parallel forces are the example of this type of force system. Non-concurrent forces may be coplanar or non-coplanar. Coplanar and concurrent force system. A force system in which all the forces lie in a single plane and meet at one point. For example, forces acting at a joint of a roof truss. Next, we have coplanar and non-concurrent force system. These forces do not meet at a common point. However, they lie in a single plane. For example, forces acting on a beam as shown. So these four forces does not intersect with each other. Next force system is called as non-coplanar and concurrent force system. In this system, the force lie in a different planes but pass through a single point. Example is force acting at the top end of an electrical pole. As shown in the figure, yung mga forces natin intersects each other at a single point but it doesn't have the same plane. Last would be non-coplanar and non-concurrent force system. The forces which do not lie in a single plane and do not pass through a single point are known as non-coplanar and non-concurrent forces. Example is the loads transferred through columns to the regular mat foundation as shown in our figure. So that's all for our fundamental concepts in statics of rigid bodies. See you again sa ating next video.